As human beings and denizens of the earth, we face a serious problem. Our world is warming. Our planet is plundered. It is unequivocal. We are destroying our environment. We are killing ourselves. We must act now and change our ways for the sake of our survival. The root cause has been in the way we live, the way we use up our natural resources, and the way we seek economic growth. And we've treated our atmosphere like an open septic tank for our wastes. With the changing climate and increasing losses from disasters, Mother Nature is talking back to us, but still many choose to be deaf and apathetic. What has been driving our world is money, profit, material wealth, our standard for economic growth. Is this what we really have to strive for? Is this the real meaning of wealth? Is this the real purpose of living? My advocacy and the disaster risk reduction. My mission to Bhutan was most insightful. The Bhutanese are already rethinking development in concept and in measure. They would measure their nation's development in terms of cross national happiness. They have an institute to study its indicators. As a people, they value socio-economic development that is sustainable and equitable, protects their ecosystems, enhances their cultural resilience, and ensures good political governance. I admire the Bhutanese for this development philosophy. We must come to understand that our social vulnerability depends much on the choices we make and the actions we take as leaders and decision makers, as planners and builders, and as members of a society and a community. Recent studies have found that what drive poverty and disaster vulnerabilities of communities are the so-called deadly trio, poor urban governance, weak rural livelihoods, and ecosystems decline. Our complacency and disregard for nature shape the disaster risks in our midst by the way we change our environment and the way we choose to live in it. Yet if we only recognize the risks that our actions bring and take decisive actions to reduce or eliminate them, we could stop disasters from happening and protect human lives and livelihoods beforehand. We need to revisit and rethink our approach to socio-economic development which for many decades has allowed our social vulnerabilities to grow, to spread, and to prevail until today. Poverty and gender inequality, environmental degradation, rapid urbanization, and now climate change have all conspired to create enormous risks in our communities. This we cannot allow to continue. We ask ourselves then, how can we develop our societies without compromising the welfare of generations to come? How can we develop without putting the poor at greater risk? How can we realize our shared goals on poverty reduction and sustainable development for the millennium with greater certainty of success? These are complex questions that cannot be answered within the framework that created the complex problem. The challenge really lies in redefining development and innovating an approach for the 21st century. A development approach that is holistic, equitable, proactive, and effective in reducing social vulnerabilities such as poverty and powerlessness, and in building the resilience of nations and communities to disaster and climate change. An approach that builds on consensus for partnerships, collaboration, and cooperation at all levels. Leaders have a moral obligation. We must lead responsibly and wisely. We must reduce disaster risks in our midst. We must prepare our people to adapt to a changing climate. I shall continue to call for a new development paradigm that fully appreciates the linkage between sustainable development, environmental protection, peace and security. A new thinking that respects the laws of nature a new way of developing with equity and fairness and accountability and good governance. The marginalized for our society and for the world. The time to make that difference is now. Humanity's future depends on us. Let us be the change we seek.